In our previous videos, we have mentioned about the flank sections can exist in two conditions at the ultimate limit state. The spread spot may lie within the compressive flank or it may go beyond the compressive flank. In the previous videos, we have already discussed the derivations of the equations based on the conditions where the stress block lies within the compressive flank. Therefore, in this video, we are going to focus on the conditions where the stress block is beyond the flank region. This figure shows a typical stress block for a flank conditions where the stress block beyond the flank region. There are two parts of the stress block. One is referring to the flank sections, while the other one is referring to the web sections which is undergoing compressions. The S here is greater than the thickness of the flank. You will see that the entire flank here now is contributing to the compressive force to the concrete section. Its effective area is defined by Bf multiply the thickness of the flank. The resultant compressive force due to the flank is calculated by multiplying the design strength of the concrete with the effective areas of the flank. The force is acting at the centroid of the stress block. This gives a lever arm Z1 in referring to FST positions equals to the D minus half of the height of the flank. As for the second part of the stress plot, it is representing the compressive stress offered by the web of the sections. The effective area will be determined by minusing the S with the height of the flank multiply the width of the web. The resultant force due to the compressive regions of the web is determined by multiplying the design strength of the concrete with the effective area of the web undergoing compressions. The resultant force due to the compressive web is acting at the centroid of the stress plot. This gives you a lever arm Z2 which is equal to D minus height of the flank minus half of the height of the stress plot here. The tension steel bar is heading to the opposite directions to the compressive forces. Now we look into the derivations process for the flank sections under these conditions. To determine the moment of the sections, it is obtained by multiplying the compressive force of the flank multiply with the lever arm Z1 plus FCW due to the web multiply with the lever arm Z2 as given in these equations. The forces on the concrete flank and the Z1 as well as the concrete of the web as well as the Z2 are given in the equations here. With a given moment load, there will be one unknown within the entire equation, which is the SW here, which is the height of the web. You need to solve these equations for you to determine the SW, which is later to be substituted into the equations based on the static equilibrium. 
the equations for the static equilibrium it will be fst equals to fcf plus fcw with the sw found in the equations to be substituted into the equation here you will have only one unknown which is as solve the entire equation here you will obtain the required amount of the reinforcement bar to be provided at the bottom of the web section bear in mind that these equations is only valid when the flange is undergoing compressions in the case that the flange is not undergoing compressions the sections will be designed as if a rectangular beam because the concrete is considered not offering anything in terms of the tensile resistance 